Good evening from sunny, beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Not 20 minutes ago, just down the road, I saw a guy building an ark because it's raining so much, and 100,000 people died of the zombie virus today in Columbus. Would you believe it? You would if you saw people. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the DTX 2200 from OTC, Osaka Transformer Corporation. Um, I started testing this machine two days ago. I had experienced it twice before, but this is my first chance to get it in the workshop and actually actually weld with it for a while, do a project with it, see how it works. First thing I want to address is the last video and the two or three people, I suppose, that actually opened that and watched it, um, that I want to I want to correct something that I said. So on the on the last video, I said that I understood that the mixed wave was a combination of AC and DC, where it would run an AC wave and then go to DC negative and then run another AC wave and go to DC negative. Kind of sort of, sort of what it is. Um, effectively, that's what it is, but it's more like a, it's a square wave with a prolonged, the uh, prolonged negative side of the wave every other negative side of the wave so I, uh, I got a tablet and I wrote this down okay it's a welding coupon <clears throat> so normally we would think of an AC wave uh, one complete cycle of an AC wave as being starting at zero going to peak positive or negative, let's say positive since that's the way I drew it. So going from zero to peak positive, pass through zero to peak negative, and then, and then upon reaching zero, that's one cycle of the wave of your AC arc. The mixed wave is, is actually this here. So you start at zero, it, it actually starts on on electrode positive, so uh, shoots up to peak, and then through zero to peak negative, and then through zero again to peak positive, and then through zero again, and this time the negative side is, is prolonged. Uh, is it two or three times as long, roughly, from, from the description I was getting? Although I'm not, I don't think, I, I didn't get an answer on that. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't know how much longer it is, but it's noticeably longer. So when you when you weld with this mixed wave, the result is that you get better penetration because of this because of this thing. We all know that with the DC negative provides more penetration than DC positive. So the negative side of an AC wave provides more penetration than the positive side of the AC wave. On the, on the negative side, roughly 70% of the energy of the arc is being absorbed by the workpiece. On the positive side of a wave, or on DC positive, roughly 70% of the heat is being absorbed by the electrode, and 30% by the workpiece. And that explains why if you're running DC positive, if you, uh, if you had to weld aluminum on DC positive, say, <clears throat> um, that explains why you have to step up your electrode size by one based on the amperage that you would run. So say if you were going to run uh, 100 amps, you would use a 330 seconds electrode on DC negative. If you're going to run 100 amps on DC positive, you're going to switch it up to uh, one eighth electrode. Okay, so... This is one complete cycle of the mixed wave. And this is two complete waves. So you have one here, you know, positive, negative. You have one here, positive, negative. But this whole thing together is one cycle, according to OTC, when you're running on the mixed wave. So when, you, when you're using the mixed wave, you need to take that into account. If you're used to, as I am, if you, if you like to start at 120 hertz, uh, which is my starting point for any machine. It's the it's the pro set on Miller for a reason. It's it's a good place to start, and then you can go up and down from there according to what you need to do. 
Um, if you set the machine to 60, you're effectively getting 240 hertz because you're, you're, you are completing two waves here with one cycle. So 60 cycles in a second is actually 120 waves in a second, which brings you back to uh, brings you back to 120 hertz if you were running any normal AC wave, square, sinusoidal, triangu triangular, dipsy doos, whatever, <clears throat> dipsy don'ts. All right, so that is um, that's one cycle of, or excuse me, that's the uh, mixed wave. <clears throat> so um, gives you better penetration. It helps to direct the the arc cone better. This helps with, say, fillet joints, whether it's an inside corner or, um, or a lap joint uh, or a T-joint. If you're doing a fillet weld, whatever kind of joint it is, if you're doing a fillet, fillet weld, then it helps to keep the arc, the center of the arc, in the, uh, in the root of the joint. It's not going to wander as much. Anybody who's welded DC uh, positive on stick knows that the arc, especially if you're going to do a fillet, um, fillet weld, the arc tends to wander, right? Sort of does this and acts all crazy on you. And that, that's why you want to shorten your arc and get it in there so it doesn't have as far to wander. The farther back, the more it wanders and it, it gets out of control sometimes. And if you switch to AC, it tends to be more it tends to be more directed because you do have a positive side that's more centered and directed. So um, this mixed wave does help you keep the arc focused when you're doing, when you're doing fillets. Um, that, that prolonged negative side of that, of that last, that last negative side of the wave being prolonged like that <clears throat> um, also makes it a lot easier on the electrode. You're putting more heat into the workpiece, centered on where you're trying to put it, and you're um, and you're not heating up the electrode as much. And I've got my electrode here from the last time I ran this machine. So this is oh dear, not getting very good focus on this, but this is roughly two hours of welding on aluminum most of that time was on the uh, mixed wave I did do some square wave but I'm sorry I'm not uh, I'm not able to this is one man with a with a with a camera phone or phone camera so um, I can't I uh, can't zoom in on that but it is remarkably clean I see no evidence of any erosion of the electrode the the ball is about one sixteenth of an inch and it stayed that way the entire time i was welding uh the electrode is clean it it's it's remarkable it's remarkable how clean this electrode stayed i never retouched it i never took it out of the torch i put my my ck worldwide e3 electrode in there and um and it had a it was sharpened started welding this is what i got after like two hours so I was really I was really impressed <clears throat> with uh, with how well it kept the electrode um, shaped <clears throat> and I think that has to do with that that prolonged negative side so um, nice feature very nice feature um, it's not going to help you with cast materials and I talk about cast materials a lot because it's something I do a lot of I do a lot of uh, alterations of intake manifolds, uh, virtually all of which are cast aluminum, and uh, it's not going to help me with that. So uh, more electrode positivity tends to help you with that, as well as, uh, in my experience anyway, as well as reduced frequency. Bringing the frequency down uh, helps you with that. So um, that mixed wave doesn't help me there. The machine has square wave, triangle wave, and mixed wave. Um, I did a little bit of square wave. I have not touched the triangular wave. Really not, I'm not convinced the triangular wave is useful, but I'll try it out and see if anything changes my mind. I've used it on the Miller Dynasties, and I've used it on the Fronius Magic Wave, and I don't know, it, it just doesn't seem useful. But 
Maybe somebody will correct me. I'll bet somebody will correct me because anybody who watches this is probably a welder. And as you probably know, if you know a welder, if you are a welder, you're convinced that um, everybody else is wrong, you're dumb. Okay, so uh, well, the other thing I wanted to say is uh, this is this is the torch, by the way, that the OTC machine comes with. It's it's a Weld Tech, it's a Weld Tech torch. It's a number twenty Type twenty torch, uh, small and lightweight. It's it is rigid, which is actually what I prefer. I I'm not a fan of flex head torches. It's uh, I'm sure that there are some people who find them very useful. I don't. Um, I definitely could see it being useful. If you do a lot of awkward positioning, um, maybe people who do pipe, uh, especially field work doing pipe, like out, out, uh, you know, pipelines and that kind of thing. I could see that maybe, uh, maybe a flex head would be useful. I leave it when I, I have a flex head torch, my, um, the CK on my, uh, dynasty 210 is, um, uh, CK 17, um, 17 F flex headed torch. And, Great torch, but I never use the flex feature. I always keep it in this like, neutral position like this. I never, I never ever change it. Um, one reason is, as you flex, the, the more you flex this um, copper, th this is a copper element in here and or a copper tube, and uh, copper work hardens, and eventually it's going to crack. Now, when they when they make a flex head torch, this is in here. This is annealed copper. Um, to make it more flexible, but annealed or not, it's eventually going to crack. The more you flex it, the sooner it'll crack. When it cracks, you're uh, you're leaking gas. So I don't do it anyway. Nice torch. Um, put that back up. Um, yeah. So. The other thing I wanted to say is that the electrode, um, the ball here on the end of the electrode is actually, I don't know how they do this electrically, but they have a ball setting on the machine and um, you set the diameter of the ball that you want. It goes down to one millimeter and up to four millimeters. So uh, one millimeter being... Um, 40 thousandths or so of an inch. I'd say that's right about what I've got on this. It's, it, it is less than a 16th. I said a 16th earlier, but it's, it's less than a 16th. I'd say it's right about 40 thousandths of an inch. And, um, you set the machine to one millimeter when it lights off the, uh, when it lights off the electrode for the first time after you sharpen it, it detects, I don't know how that point of the, the the tip of the electrode is not a 40 thousandths diameter ball and it makes it a 40 thousandths diameter ball before it starts welding of course that happens in the blink of an eye or less so don't look for it but uh, that's that's what it does it's remarkable <laughs> um, the first time I uh, I used this machine I thought based on the the pictographic on the on the face of the machine and not having a manual I thought that um, that elect the, the diameter setting was not the diameter of the ball, but the diameter of the electrode. So I was welding with, um, a three thirty seconds electrode, which is, uh, what? 2.4 millimeter. So I set it to 2.4 and, uh, and I started welding and it blew the end of the electrode apart. I mean, just incinerated the electrode and, uh, that was the wrong choice. Uh, it was, I, I misunderstood the, uh, I misunderstood the point of that setting. So, uh, once I got straightened out on that and, uh, and set it correctly, it worked really nicely. Um, okay. So I tend to like a small ball on the end of the electrode. I don't like, uh, I don't like a really big ball. The only, the only time, um, I allow a full diameter ball to form is when I'm working on a casting and I'm going with for a lot of electrode positivity 
typically like 40% electrode positive, 60% negative, something like that. And when you're doing that, the closer you get to 50-50, the more it's going to ball. It's going to, it might even form more than a full diameter. It might actually form like a three millimeter ball on a, on a 2.4 electrode. I tend to like a small point. So I had it set at one millimeter. That created one problem. Um, in order to keep that little ball and, and make that make that ball form, when you have it set down to such a small ball, like a like a one millimeter ball, it will it's gonna the machine starts on AC or on on positive on the positive side of the wave, and it's because it's starting so gently to try to keep that ball from in, uh, getting too big, it, it'll give you a false start sometimes. Uh, if your workpiece is not perfectly clean and perfectly grounded, it might give you a false start. So the OTC, uh, the TIG guy today told me, um, if you have a lot of problems with false starts and your workpiece is as clean as you're going to make it, then increase that um, electrode diameter setting or the ball diameter setting and that'll that'll help so I'm gonna see if that works today all right I'm gonna start doing some welding with this and uh, and see how it goes if I have a chance I'm gonna get into the advanced menu the advanced menu allows you to do some other stuff the surface menu on this machine gives you a lot of features typically what you would get and um, actually more than what you get in say a dynasty uh, DX or um, or an as Lincoln aspect. Typically, more uh, parameters on the surface menu, but if you go into the advanced menu, you get other things such as adjusting the amplitude individually on your AC wave. So I'm hoping I can get into that today and uh, and play with that a little bit. Try to play around with adjusting amplitude and time in positive and negative and see see what that gets me um, one of the things I'm hoping is that I get I get better I can get better penetration out of this than a typical 220 machine by playing around with um, with DC and AC amplitude and DC and AC time um, using the uh, the mixed wave I'm hoping that I find some combination that makes it really dig into thicker materials better uh, it's one of the problems with my with my dynasty 210 is that occasionally like once or twice a year I get some heavy aluminum project in the workshop and I have to heat it up with the with the oxyacetylene torch and um, play all kinds of tricks to uh, to get it welded and I'd like to have the power to to power through it with the torch only we'll see if this machine does that let's weld <laughs> 